What up, infidels? Back for another Wednesday check-in episode of Dangerous Brown. Good to see you guys. Uh, glad to be back. Um, if you're wondering when we're doing the Bible again, Friday, we're back on the Bible, and then I'll be more dedicated about the Bible to get through it a little quicker, because I realized, damn, we're only on Leviticus, like, a third of the way through. I got to speed it up, you know? I want to get to the Quran. I want to get to the... I, I'm curious to see what the Book of Mormon's going to be like. Like, we're going through them, you know what I mean? So I, I'll, I'll be a little bit better about that. That's for sure. Um, but good to see y'all guys. Good to see y'all. Good. Thanks for checking in here on my bed again. Still haven't gotten, um, the bed frame yet, which I'll get to eventually. You know I me. Mean? I'm, you know me guys. I'm the laziest person that's ever existed. I'm so lazy, dude. I'm so lazy. I barely, I, I barely get up in time to do that. That's how lazy I am. I'm like, I have to wake up before 12 today to do dangerous Brown for sure. And I got up at 11. I was like, I, I waited I waited for the last possible hour before 12 to get up. I am lazy. Um, the beard is coming in, though. Right? This is two months of the beard. I'm waiting for it to go back long, but it's a good look now. It's a good look. You know what's crazy? I think my TikTok was blowing up with my beard and my hair because, like, Bobby Lee told me this a long time ago, and I think I said it on this podcast, but, bro, he said, if you grow your hair and your beard out and you have that crazy look, you'll book more stuff. It'll be more marketable. And the TikTok blowing up over quarantine was is proof of that. I don't want to do the hair again, unfortunately. I can't. I can't. It's too much. Long beard ball is a good strong look, you know? Start working out again, maybe. May I said like I you know, like I said, lazy ass. I said maybe. Maybe start working out again. I brought my exercise mat here. Have I used it? Of course not. Why? Cause I'm lazy as fuck. Fuck, bro. Try to find a lazier person. I dare you. There's definitely lazier people. I'm not like 600 pounds. I, I was thinking that. Like, if you're 600 pounds, you are for sure the laziest person. Like, cause like, no walking. Like, no walking. Your day involves zero walking. You don't got a job. You don't got to like, how do you, how do you avoid walking? Maybe that maybe if I'm coming from a place of privilege where I've always had jobs where I'm on my feet and I could walk around and but like I guess you could just stand in an assembly line and not walk. But it seems it seems so crazy. It seems so crazy that it got to that place. Six hundred pounds is like, bro, what? That that that's some that's some mental issue stuff going on there, huh? There's no way. There's no way. There's no I did I I would I guarantee you there is no well adjusted six hundred pound person. There can't be. There can't be someone that you meet that you're like, bro, he's 600 pounds, but he's in a good place. Oh, yeah, she's killing it. She, uh, she's, a, she, she's happy all the time. She breathes normally. Like, there's no way. There's no way. There's no... The Venn diagram of people who are 600 pounds and in a good place are two completely separate circles. Yeah, uh, and it's like the like because there's shows on like TLC where it's like my 600 pound life, where you watch all these people who have who just get this big, and you're like, oh, this is just the TV equivalent of a zoo. This is a human zoo. I don't know if you knew this. Like back in like the 20s and 30s, they used to just have human zoos where you could see weird humans. Like this, the, you know, like sort of like the freak show, like bearded ladies. Some human zoos just had black people. Look that up where people were like, oh, wow, look at that. That's a black person. Crazy. Can you imagine how scary that would be to see in the wild? That I mean, that's, that, that's what human zoos were. Honey, look. Negro Africanus. Interesting. Bet you want to hop on that one, honey, huh? <laughs> You're a whore. Or like, well, you know what I mean? This is my impression of a 1930s husband. Crazy. That's one life. That's like. There, there are people alive today who saw a black person in a zoo. Isn't that, isn't that interesting? The good old days, as I like to call them. No. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, man. Thank God no one listens to this, huh? I've said like 30 cancelable things on this podcast. Um, 
Yeah, but yeah, the TLC is just a zoo for TV. That's what it really is, right? Because well, look at these fat guys, and look at these guys with like 19 kids. Watch at them, stare at them. Be glad you're not them. I have, yeah, I watched one episode of my 600-pound life, and I was like, this is just... How does this not make you sad? How do people watch, like... How do people watch... First of all, how do people watch, like, two episodes, let alone seasons? Dude, seasons? If you got that 600-pound mentality, good God. Why would you... Why, why would you want that energy in your life? Except to mock it, I guess. It just it seems like... It seems like it seems so negative to me. But who knows? I'm out here being negative about that experience. Maybe it's just a positive experience to watch that. Who do I know? Who do I know? Um, who do I know? Jesus, what do I know? Uh, interesting week. Um, back doing stand-up again, like, heavy is a good feeling. It's been a while. It's been a while since I've been doing stand-up heavy again, and this is good. I opened for Donnell Rawlings. This past weekend at the Vulcan. That if you don't know who Donnell Rawlings is, this is like a. Uh, he was described best to me as a made man, like that bro. He was in the Chappelle Show, like a big part of the Chappelle Show. Uh, the dude is incredibly funny on stage. He uh, was in the new Pixar movie. He was in Soul. You know what I mean? Like, he's in an Academy Award winning, in an Academy Award winning movie like that, bro. He is doing it, dude. And he is so funny. If you have a chance to see Donnell Rawlings live, bro, look at it. Go. Do it. It is so worth it. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Best part about doing shows now is that they'll lock up the phones before the show. So people are, like, fully into it. You know, the, the, one of the worst parts about stand-up is sometimes is that you have to compete with someone looking on their phone. Like, they're, they're just addicted to it, right? I, and I'm, no, I'm not different. I'm very, very addicted to my phone. But it's curious to see, like, a show. I guess curious is the wrong word. It's cool to see a show where everyone's phone's locked up and they are present, dude. People are present at that show for, like, 90 minutes. It's amazing. And people are jonesing some people to see their phones. It's incredible, bro. In the middle of the show, they'll get up to the place where you go outside to unlock your phones, unlock their phones, and then check their notifications for a little bit. People are like phone fiends, bro. They come up to me. I'm the host of the show. They're like, man, can you unlock this shit, man? Come on, man, just for a second, man. I'll, I'll suck your dick for some notifications, man. Like, it's insane how attached we are to these things, dude. We're attached to them. I'm attached to them. I'm attached to them. Like, really, like, performing at these shows where the phones are not allowed has really made me realize, like, oh, like, I got to make an effort to be on my phone less. I got to make that effort. It's hard because there's, it's, like, it's, like, worse than cocaine, I would imagine, in terms of just releasing serotonin. Every time you see that red box with a number in it pop up, your brain's like, ooh, reward. But, bro, we got to, I mean, I, I got to stop. I got to stop. I got to check. Let me see. I'm, I, as I get on my phone right now, I want to see my phone usage time because it's shocking. I am on my phone. Hold on. Let's see if they have it here. Um, I forgot how to check it. Is it general? Um, maybe not here. Uh, battery. Here we go. I think it's under battery. Let's charge 100%. Screen on 22 hours. Screen off 45 minutes. That doesn't make any sense. First of all, I do go to sleep. But that's how much it says my screen is on. 22 hours. So I am like... I am addicted, addicted. That's insane. It's like, that's insane. I didn't realize it was on that much. But I'm out here... Man, that's some 600-pound mentality. I will say that. To be on your phone that much, that's 600. I got, I got that 600-pound mentality in me. I was just shitting on it. I was like, oh, I ain't better than it. I ain't better than it. I ain't better than the things I shit on. I'll say that. 
I'm on my phone that much that my phone thinks I'm on 22 hours a day. It said screen off time, 45 minutes. That's how I'm living life, son. Isn't that sad? Isn't that sad, dude? It's crazy. I don't even watch porn anymore. That's 22 hours without porn. With porn, that's probably, I'm probably on my phone 26 hours a day. That's crazy. Yeah, I, I've made the effort over the past week to not watch porn. Because it's like, I've been watching it pretty heavily. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Since I was, I remember the first time I watched porn, I was, um, um, I was trying to watch Family Guy, trying to find a place to watch Family Guy online. And that was like seventh grade at the time. And there was an app called the Winamp app. I don't know if you remember Winamp, but uh, it was like an a online sort of TV that you could download that had different stations. And one of the stations was Family Guy. So I'd watch Family Guy, like play Family Guy 24 hours. And then it had an adult section. And I, and I was in seventh grade, and I was curious. I was like, what is this adult section? What is, really, what is porn really like? You know, you have a vague idea what porn is, but you never, I've never seen it before. And I clicked it, and, bro, it freaked me out. It was too much for a 12th, for a 12 year old, not a 12th grader, for a 12-year-old. It was a lot. It was a lot. Because, like, the video I clicked, it was just, there was just too many dudes for that, for that woman, man. That's how, that, that's how, like, I wish I'd stumbled onto regular porn first instead of a gangbang. That's what I wish. And what's crazy is that, too, what made it worse is that, like, everyone in the gangbang was so disconnected from what was happening. It was so impersonal. It was so business. Do you feel what I mean? Like, I watched, like, I didn't watch, like, a, a good acting porn. This was a straight business gangbang. That's, what, like, to the point where, like, one of, the, one of the performers, while he was inside of the woman, looked at his watch like he had somewhere better to be. Like, he was like, bro, we got to wrap this at four. I got to pick up my kids from school. Or like, you know what I mean? Like, he was like, he was just not checked out. And it, like, it was so, it was too much. It was too much. There needs to be, like, training wheel porn for, like, kids to be like, this is what intimacy looks like. You know? Because some of, all, some of us don't have parents that talk to you about sex at all. Ain't no birds and the bees. Sex is a taboo thing. And the only way you learn is by pornography. And you're like, oh, is this real? Because that's, that's what I thought when I first stumbled across it. I was like, oh, is this real? Is this, what, is this what sex is? Which, of course, it's not. But, you know, if you know nothing about the thing, you're like, oh, this must, this must be what it's like. I got to, you know, get a pizza delivery job or not pay rent. Too many. It was just, it was just like four disinterested guys fucking the most disinterested woman. It was so much. That was my first porn. It, it freaked me out. I, I remember that I couldn't watch porn for another like three, four hours after that. It really messed me up, dude. We used to have, we used to have like. So the way we'd I'd first watch it, um, with my friends, um was uh <laughs> like the voice we yeah, would be like we would go over to my neighbor's house and then my friends would come over it would be a bunch of dudes and they'd be like bro check this site out and then we and then we we'd uh we just check out random sites bro there were so many funny ones back then like the hub has changed that so there's um um you know the the, the it's just different like Back then, you just had, like, certain sites that you could buy membership to, right? Like, one of them, bro, it was so funny. It was called Mr. Chew's Asian Beaver, right? And it was just all Asian people, obviously, right? Well, it was Asian girls, white guys, clearly. Come on. We ain't, you know, we're, we're not um, – even porn has representation problems, you know? Um, Mr. So, and it would just be, like, these Asian girls. And, it, and then at the end, this, this, like, racist drawing of a beaver – with like the buck teeth and the Chinese hat and a long like Fu Manchu mustache would come on and be like, oh, this girl gets, this is a terrible Asian ac accent, but you know what I mean? Like in a thick Asian accent, it would, would rate each girl out of fortune cookie, like f out of five fortune cookie. This girl gets five fortune cookie. And it's like, but all the girls would be rated four or five fortune cookies. And it's like, bro, that's not how life works. 
There's no way every sexual experience for you it was a- absolutely amazing. There's no way some of those actresses were just like, oh, I can't believe I'm doing this for a paycheck. This is awful. There's some uh, one or two fortune cookie, gir- fortune cookie videos in there that they did not rate. That was one. Bro, there was another one called Captain Stabbing, and it's like this guy would take girls on a, like, girls with him on a boat, and they'd have sex on a boat, and then he would throw the girl off the boat, and she would have to, you know, swim back to shore. That was Captain Stabbing. Bro, what is, bro, what is pornography, dude? This is why I have to stop watching it. Like, look how messed up that is. I mean, so funny. So funny, too, that I thought it was real, too, in seventh grade. Like, what a what kind of dumbass was I? Like, because it's, like, clearly media, but there's no other form of media that I thought was real. Like, you know what I mean? I've ever watched Game of Thrones and be like, damn, they had dragons in the Middle Ages? No, dude. So, like, the fact that I thought this form of media was real was is a next-level stupidity. People are dumb about sex. People are dumb about sex. Well, no, I should not say that. I, was, I am dumb about sex. Not people. I guess some people are. I am people. But I specifically am dumb about sex. For sure. Um, so funny, dude. Captain Step. Mr. Choose Asian Beaver, bro. I got to find that racist Asian beaver, dude. I'll look it up. I, I wonder if the site even exists anymore. I'm going to look it up. I'm going to look to see if that site exists. You know what? I'm going to look it up right now. Um, might as well. As I, again, get on my phone. But this is important. This is, like, necessary. I got to look this up. This counts as work. Mr. Choose Asian. <laughs> Man. No, it doesn't exist anymore. Damn. Well, it is what it is. It is what it is. Uh, it didn't pop up. Maybe it does. I gotta type. I'll type. I'll type it in later. It's too much now. But yeah, always Asian guy, Asian girl, white guy. Never Asian guy. Representation problems, bro. In every form of media, Asians have representation problems. It's funny, bro. My favorite. It is getting better. I will say this. It is getting better. Representation for Asians is like. Is the best it's ever been in, like, movies. When I first moved to Hollywood, I remember, like, an older a, older Muslim actor being like, oh, it's messed up that the only roles we get since 9-11 are the roles of terrorists. But I, I was like, I guess. But what's way more messed up is before 9-11, we were getting no roles. I feel like that's more like that's what it took to put us on the map in a weird way. Like, oh, Hollywood, fight, like... <laughs> You know what else fell that day? The barrier between me and the entertainment industry. That's what also fell. Um, but yeah, this is but the, you know, there's it's still imperfect, bro. I was I'm I'm binge watching Criminal Minds because I'm in a good place right now, and I'm uh ten seasons in or nine seasons in. One of them, they finally have their first Asian serial killer. It's so funny, bro. The first Asian serial killer is his entire show. I'm over 200 episodes in. That's how much I've binged in the past two months. Right? First Asian serial killer. Do you know what his stressor was? Dude, guess. 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 I'll give you a second. Like Dora the Explorer, I'll give you a second to guess what this Asian serial killer stressor was. Yes, you are correct. His dad was too mean to him about his grades. He did get a B, and his dad beat him mercilessly as a kid. Damn, how did you guys guess that? Such a fun show. Such a, like, it's good, like, garbage television. And even that, to have such lazy writing, is like, come on. That's so funny. That's so funny. Oh, no, my dad gave me a B. And then his brother got a C, and his dad starved his brother to death. Pretty much. Like, tortured his brother to death over getting a C. Bro. Bro. Bruh. Bruh, dude. Bruh. It's crazy, dude. Crazy, dude. 
His dad was no fun. You know what? You know, his dad was so strict, bro. He was straight business gangbang, dude. You know what I mean? Like if that, if his, if if that Asian serial killer's dad ever went to a gangbang, it would be a straight business gangbang, bro. I can't even. What? That's the only. That's how you know. Like that's a writer's room that's never really hung out with Asian people. But hey, it's the early 2010s. It was a different time, you know, different time. Now it's getting better. Representation for us is getting better. Um, it was nice. It was nice opening for Donnell. See, it's a, the comedy game is just all like wins and losses. Like a, I didn't get a uh, Just for Laughs showcase this year, which for the past two years I got. And I thought the COVID year I was going to, like, I had a good chance of getting in and then COVID happened. So, ruined my chances. But, it, like, I'm surprised that, like, I didn't get another shot. That's lame. That's lame. Dude, I, all I want to do is just, I'm eight years in the game. I want to be a new face. I want to be a new face. So, there's, like, some certain things that I want, like, on the certain, the, next to me on my, for my comedy goals. I want to be on some sort of, like, just for laughs or big sky. Some like these are these are big skies and other big sort of festival of comedians. I just yeah, I want to be on one of those to be like, hey, look, I'm a guy. That's what I want. And then I want my n- name or picture or something to be on a wall at a comedy club, whether it be the store, whether it be the Vulcan. That's the next goal for me. A picture inside of Alameda Comedy Club. I would take that. I would love that just somewhere. I uh I have done enough work to be somewhere inside or on the wall of a comedy club. That's what, that, that, that's my next sort of goal. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I'll get there. I think within the next year, I'll have something with inside a, something inside a comedy club. Within the next year, bro. I got this. I got this. It's all about... I'm putting it out in the universe that within the next year, my face or my name will be on some sort of wall at some sort of comedy club. That's a that's a that's a sort of goal of mine. Um, and then uh, what's another? I'm going to bring back Mr. Choose Asian Beaver. Um, that's a uh, that's my goal. <laughs> Those, those are my goals in life. I got to bring it back. It's the world's missing it. The world's missing it. Damn, I don't know. There's so many things I could call this episode. 600 pound energy. Mr. I think I got to call him Mr. Choose Asian Beaver. I got to call it that. That's so fucking, dude. Bruh. Like, you know what I mean? Like, what? That, like, investors looked at that and were like, this is amazing. Dude, so good. So good. Um, any thoughts? Any ideas? Oh, let's see. What else? Um, oh, this. I thought this was, this was a like cool thought I had. It may, I'm trying to maybe work it out for a joke. But here's the thought, right? Is that like so? Every year, the iPhone comes out, and it's like there's like an announcement. Right, like you know, especially with Steve Jobs, there was a whole like he'd in, he'd be a keynote speaker at a, some sort of convention and be like, "This is the new iPhone. It has, uh, look at the camera or whatever, and a front-facing camera, back-facing. Like you know, every year there's just more technology, and people are like, whoa, like oh whoa, self-driving cars, whoa. You know what I mean? Like every year technology advances, but it's like at one point, like the new technology was something as like simple as playing cards. And that blew people's minds. Like the first time the playing card came out must have been like the iPhone. People were like, this is the height of technology. What little cards that we can play games with our friends? Insane. The 1300s, bro, the playing card was like, like I imagine some sort of like Steve, middle-aged Steve Jobs guy in front of a whole convention, like, we introduced playing cards last year, and you were like, wow, these cards, some of them have faces, some of them have numbers, all of them have, all of them have hearts. We, get, we, 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 we said well, they'll all have hearts because we love you guys so much that we're going to give you this form of entertainment. Well, if you thought hearts 
was crazy. This year, we're dropping. Pulls a cord down. There's just a fucking screen. Diamonds. And the whole crowd's like, <gasps> diamonds. You know what I mean? We thought hearts was all there's going to be. You're telling me there's diamonds, bro? Technology, bro. And there's some old guy in the 1300s like, man, you kids and your diamonds. Back in my day, we had hearts both ways uphill, and we liked it. Or whatever. Some lame. This is a, this is a lame, my lame ass old guy. But like, you know what I mean? Like, every technological advancement blew someone's mind at one point, no matter how simple it was. It blew someone's fucking mind. And, but, you know, the sandwich. The first time someone invented sandwich, they must have been like, this is insane. The Earl of Sandwich, the first time he did that, people must have been like, bro, this guy's crazy. We got to put him in the loony bin. He put meat between two pieces of bread. What a fucking crazy guy. That's more bread than meat. That's double the bread than meat. Dude, this guy's off his rocker, bro. Um, yeah. <laughs> is this podcast even worth it? Um, so funny. Of course it is. I, I like doing it. Thank you guys for sticking around. I do, like I said, we'll do, we'll, we'll go through the Bible a little quicker. So we'll, on, on Friday, we'll, we'll do the next nine of Leviticus. Um, We'll get through that. So, let's see. Um, oh, yeah. Cryptocurrency is going down, huh? I've never, I never invested in crypto. It's like, it's like, um, dude, I mean, I've heard this before. I said before, but it's so true. Fucking crypto, that shit, that's, bro, that's astrology for men. That's all it is. You know what I mean? And you know what I mean when I say astrology for men. It's like astrology, but it can, like, make you more money. No, I'm, I'm kidding. But, like, you know what I mean? It's like, like, dudes are just into it. And it's, like, gross. And it's like, is this real? I mean, it's a little, like, I guess you can make money from it. So it's not like astrology where it's all just, that's just all based in the stars. And you can't really monetize that. But, like, but like bro, no one, know, like, no one knows. No one really knows. Elon said one bad thing about crypto. And that shit went, foo, down, 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 down. Dogecoin or whatever. Like, you know what I mean? Like, bro, it's just, you're just guessing. Oh, your portfolio had a bad week or was, <laughs> you know, that's how you, like, <laughs> oh, watch any, do any like tech bro on the street. If he looks at his phone and goes like, fuck, I can't believe it. That's how you know Dogecoin is in retrograde. You know? Oh, really? Oh, really? Ethereum is going up and down? Well, that's what happens when it's your moon sign. Like, bro, that shit. And I, all, my, all my friends that are into the stock market are like, bro, you should check out cryptocurrency. You should check out cryptocurrency. It's like, bro, what am I going to do? Take advice from gambling addicts? Come on now. I'm fine. I'm sure you guys could hit it big, but clearly you could also lose a fuck ton of money. Invest in crypto, invest in crypto. Why? Because I'm an Aries or whatever? I'm not even an Aries. I'm a Virgo. I do know that. I'm a Virgo, the virgin. Very fitting symbol for me. Um, what? Like, I don't know. I guess I could look into it, and I'm sure there's a bunch of high school kids going to message me about, like, bro, no, you got to do crypto, but br hey, yo, get out of my face. Well, uh, what do they call astrology on TikTok? They call it space racism. Crypto is just, it's just, yeah, it's just, it's just market racism, dude. No, like, I don't know. Maybe, maybe because I'm just, I'm like, when I was a little kid, when I was like in high school, I saw a billboard to fix your computer and one of the things it says is it accepted Bitcoin. This is like, this is like you know, 10, 10 years ago, pretty much. Maybe not. Maybe I was in high school. And I remember thinking, this Bitcoin thing, this, I, this, is the second, this is the second time I'm hearing about it. I'm hearing about it. And I could have invested then. And oh, my God, how much money I would have right now. Certain investments that I was like, man, I look back. I was like, I just wish I had the, like, 
went into the 2008 financial crisis, AIG failed the insurance company and it went down to like three cents. And then the government started bailing out all these big companies. And I, I told my parents like, bro, you should invest in AIG. And they're like, why? It just went down. I was like, bro, the government is not going to let it go all the way down. And it didn't. Last time I checked, it was trading at like $50. Could have made so much money. So much money. Bitcoin is one of them. Bitcoin is another missed investment opportunity for me for sure. And I know. I felt it. I should have I should have had the wherewithal to have been like, well, if the Silicon, these niche sort of Silicon Valley companies are accepting it, this might be a big thing. This might be a big thing. And then uh, I ignored it, and look where it is now. Now I'm out here shitting on it because I didn't, I didn't get in on it, really. But, you know, now it's too late, man. I should invest, but at the same time, I'm like, ugh, why? Why? Why invest in anything, you know? Why do anything, dude? Don't do anything, guys. Have that 600-pound mentality. When you see something that you could invest in and you'd be like, man, this might make me a lot of money in the future, don't do it. Don't do it. Have a 600-pound mentality and be like, I'm just going to lay here until I get fat. People say, people, you know, um, I'm out here, I'm talking, I'm making a lot of stuff up. Uh, I'm not in, you know what, I'm not riffing the best today. Usually I'm a a little more into the riffs. I got really high yesterday and, and, and it's affecting me today. That's how I know I'm getting older. But like, if... If, if you take anything away from this podcast, if you've made it this long, and I have maybe a couple more things to talk about, so it'll be over soon. But if you made it this long, I, ju- I just want you to know, don't, don't try. You know what I mean? Just get fat. Don't do anything. Just, just give up. Everyone out here, everyone, all these podcasts are out here. They're out here telling you, like, bro, work hard and, and find your lane and find happiness. And, and y- you know, life is what you make of it. And I'm here to tell you, no, man. Get fat, give up, become 600 pounds, be unhappy, bro. Everyone's telling you to go the other way. You need someone to tell you on the other side. Like, bro, life sucks and let it get to you, you know? <laughs> really, just, just like, you know, let it affect you negatively. Do that. It, 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 if you're in a gangbang, don't enjoy it. Be straight, serious gangbang about it. You know what I mean? Let life get to you, dude. Let it get to you. Let it eat away at your soul and let, until you become the shell of the person you once were. And you, 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 your dreams are in your rear view mirror. And you're like, damn, how did the time fly by? And you're like 600 pounds. Maybe not 600 pounds, but you're just sitting on the couch with that 600 pound mentality. And you're, and you're like, what is this? Am I a person or am I just a ghost in a shell that's sort of moving forward until just inevitably until one day I just drop dead? Be that guy. Don't be, don't listen to Joe Rogan and exercise and feel good. No, what are you doing? Be the guy that gives up, man. Be the guy that gives up. <laughs> let it go. As Elsa would say, let it go. But by letting it go, I mean, let, let, you know, just let it go. Like, let it all go. Let anything important go. Just let it go. Be that guy. That's my advice for you because I didn't invest in Bitcoin when I was younger and I feel, I feel bad about it. Let it go. There's no, there's no, there's no reason to be happy. There's no need. <laughs> I haven't gotten it laid in a while, if you couldn't tell. Um, really, really, really feeling it. Uh, um, man, I can't believe that Criminal Minds, the Asian guy, just had bad grades, huh? Like, there's no, like, you can't pitch that now because people are like, are you fucking stupid? Like, what are you talking about? But, um, yeah. Bitcoin. Is there anything I want to talk about? Oh, yeah, my, my, sports-wise, my team's lost. Awful. Oh, I should have done dates at the beginning of this. Damn. Well, I'll do it at the end, and if you make it to the end, thank you. Um, but, yeah. I watch, had to watch the Warriors lose two playing games, heartbreakingly. 41 turnovers in two games. You're not going to win like that. It's awful. You know, uh, Draymond missing that last running layup. Come on, bro. You got to close the game out like that. If you're going to take that last shot, you got to close it out. Wiggins at the end against shooting a terrible three against um, 
Memphis. Like, bro, the Warriors just didn't have a second shooter. It's crazy. They could double they double team Steph all day. The dude still scored 38 points. And they could just do that because they no one else was gonna score points for them. And then and Memphis and the Lakers knew it. And, you know, it still was a better season than I think the Warriors predicted. They were the, they made it to the eighth seed. Um, they gave two all time great playing tournament games. All time great games. Those were great games. And then yeah. But they lost and it sucks. And hopefully next year with Clay we'll be back. I think with Clay, I mean Clay and Steph, as soon as Steph, as soon as you can't double team Steph, the game changes for the Warriors. The game changes for the Warriors. You can't double team the best player in the league. Well, things are about to heat up for the Warriors. They're about to win more games. This is a 40 win team next season. With the development of their players and hopefully Ubre comes back off the bench. Like well, there's there there is a there is a path for the Warriors to be good next year. So I'm not all the way down. I'm down. The Giants got swept by the Dodgers. That sucks. That sucks. I wanted to prove that we were a real team, and then they get swept by the presumably the best team in the league. It's just awful, man. It was a bad week for Bay Area sports. Bay Area sports gets me down. Like, not Bay Area. What am I saying? Sports gets you down. Because your team can't always be the winner. The one time it is, it's amazing, and that's what it's all for. That's the higher chasing. But, bro, sports gets me down. It's been so, I mean, like, I was explaining to Derek, it's been so rough for Barrier Sports. We haven't been to a championship game in, like, two years. And then we haven't won a championship in, like, three years. <laughs> it's been rough, man. We've, can you imagine going to two Super Bowls this decade and losing both of them? <laughs> you guys get it, right? Vikings, Bears, Browns, Lions, Panthers. I guess Panthers have been to a Super Bowl. Jets fans, you guys know how it feels to not go to a championship game in over two years. Oh, it's rough, man. It's rough. It's so rough. I don't know. I don't know how I do it, man. It's really like, I don't know. I, I don't know who has more pain than a Bay Area sports fan. I guess Boston sports fans, Boston sports fans have a lot of pain. I mean, they haven't had a dynasty since... 2018 <laughs> god dude that's the only 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 in the in the post two in the 2000s this millennium the only area that's had a better run of it of sports than the bay area has been the boston area because boston has what six super bowls they went to eight a stanley cup maybe two stanley cups i think two stanley cups what four world series and then um, a, a NBA championship. Been to two NBA championships. Lost one, one, one. That's uh, that's the only place I think that's better than uh, Bay Area because Bay Area has had four World Series, won three, two Super Bowls, lost both, five NBA championships, won three, and then one Stanley Cup appearance. But on top of that, Barrier Sports also had Barry Bonds break the home run record, a perfect game being thrown, um, the catch three, Niners, the Niners, Saint, any sort of Niners Saints game. Um, there have been some great moments and some great players. Madison Bumgarner, like, it's been a good time for, to be a Barrier Sports fan. It, it has. I've, I've grown up lucky. I've grown up seeing some bad teams, but it's like it's always kind of like hope is around the corner. That's how it feels. Like even at, at Niners this year, hope is definitely around the corner. So I guess I can't complain too much. All right. Um, any sort of news that I want to talk about? Uh, oh, yeah. Apparently, Corona, prob like they're looking at it as it, it coming out of a lab. Like they think like, oh, Corona might have come out of a lab, which would be like, bro, what are we going to do with China? If that, if that was man-made, it came out of a lab, that means not only, because not only did China not act enough when it spread, that means they already knew the potential to spread before it was spreading, and they did nothing about it. So what is the world going to do? That'll be interesting. What are we going to not invest in China? Because... At the end of the day, they got the slaves, baby. Was the world going to be like, no, we're not going to use the slaves that you guys have? 
like moral stances only go so far. People still want their things for cheap. So what are we going to do with China? That's like a big problem. Because they can't, they obviously, if it's man-made and they release it, bro, you can't get away with that. You're not allowed. Because if they get away with that, that means they'd be like, oh, we can just attack the world more next time. If we know there's no consequences for it for us. And, hey, conspiracy theorists, you did it. You freaking got one right. Congratulations, man. Congratulations. I am proud of you guys. You're like one for 83. Congrats. Appreciate it. Um, appreciate it. Con- but congrats. Wild, dude. It came from a lab. What are we going to do with China, bro? It's like, it's like you can't even ask that question without seeming racist. It's like people who, are like, who think anti-Israel is anti-Semitic. It's like, no, bro. These are two different things. I'm not against the Chinese people, but the Chinese government, there's something going on there that we, like, if this came from a lab, bro, what are we going to do? We got to do something. We can't just take that sit down. But what are we, like, divest in China? Like, be like, oh, we don't want you to manufacture our stuff? Well, I'm not ready for everything to cost a million dollars. You know what I mean? Like, the reason why we're... The investment, we're investing in China to be like, bro, we don't want our, we don't want the slaves on our shores anymore. Put them somewhere else. So what are we going to do? We're like economically tied to that place. You can say let's divest in China, but do we have a backup plan? Do we have any place else we can invest into that we can exploit their cheap labor? Because I don't want that shit to come back to the U.S. Hell no. I live too comfortably for that to come back. So what do we do? What do we do? We got to remake Mr. Choose Asian Beaver with that racist beaver guy back. I'm going to see if I can. I'm going to look up one more thing here. I'm going to look up one more thing here. I must look up if they, if they have it. If I can find the image of the beaver. Um, damn, they don't have it. Asian beaver cartoon. I'm just looking at, there's just a bunch of porn on my uh uh Google image. I'm just watching all these I'm just watching Asian Asian women get fucked. But uh uh I'm just looking at Mr. Chu's Asian Beaver mascot. Because I want to show you guys, but if I can't find it, it's just like damn, it's just a, it's just a moment in time that you guys missed. Oh, you can't see it there. It's too, uh, it's too grainy. Damn. You can't see it. It's so grainy. Oh, I can't show you guys. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Maybe, you know what? I'll have to watch one of these videos to see if he pops up at the end. Just to show you guys. I'll do, I'll do that. I'll, you know what? I'll do that right now, guys. This has been a good episode. Uh, <laughs> I just told you I'm going to go watch porn, basically. Um, but no, I got, I got to, I got to show you guys. I got to show you guys. Um, but yeah, uh, I'll see you guys. We'll do, uh, Leviticus on Friday. All right, guys. Uh, thank you so much infidels. I'll see you soon. Later.